Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am back with another first impressions on a foundation. Today's foundation in question is going to be the Becca Ultimate Coverage Complexion Cream. But before we get started, if this is the first video of mine you are seeing, I just want to say welcome to my channel. My name is Sari. I do these foundation reviews pretty regularly and I always have the list of foundations I've reviewed in the past down below. And my plans for 2016 are to review a ton of foundations this year because I love doing these reviews to help out people like me who have very oily and acne prone skin and scarring and things like that because I know how hard it can be to find reviews from people who have more like problematic skin. I'm also always taking requests for new foundations. The more a foundation gets requested the more I bump it up my list or if you comment and request a foundation the more thumbs up it gets I'll bump it up as well so that's kind of just how I do things here but anyways if you find this video helpful or interesting or anything like that please hit subscribe down below it really helps me out and makes my day. But let's go ahead and jump right into the details of this foundation. Like I said, today we are trying the Becca Ultimate Coverage Complexion Cream. If you've been around my channel for a while, you know I like to give you all the specifics and everything about the foundation before we get started. So to start off, the price for this foundation is $53 Canadian or $44.4. $44, $44. That is not a number. Well, it is, but that would be really expensive for a foundation. $44 USD and you get the standard 30 ml or one fluid ounce. Packaging is very simple. It's just like a very like standard matte brown packaging with the pump. Only downside that I can see to this packaging is that you're not really going to be able to tell when you're getting low on product, which is kind of annoying. But that isn't like a huge deal breaker or anything. It's just kind of a slight inconvenience. As for shades, there are 20 shades in the range for this foundation, and they seem to have a pretty good range from like very fair to like very deep complexions. I chose the shade Shell. I ordered this online, so I didn't like swatch them or anything like that. I had to kind of blind order it. And this is the second lightest shade, and it says it is for fair beige skin tones with a neutral undertone. For finish and coverage, it says it is a full coverage foundation, as the name implies, and it really doesn't state anything for like finish. It doesn't say whether it's going to be matte or natural or luminous or what. For the claims, sorry if I'm looking down, I made notes, but this claims to be a very breathable foundation and it's supposed to have a high concentration of pigments and also water, so it kind of reminds me of the Marc Jacobs Remarkable. They claim that it will cover imperfections, redness, hyperpigmentation, blemishes, and even cover uneven texture. So this sounds like a dream come true for people like me who have acne and scarring and things like that. They claim that it is ideal for all skin types and they also say that with this foundation you will only need a fraction of the amount you use when applying a regular foundation. So once again, that kind of seems to be like the big thing lately with foundation. Like they claim super weightless, like you'll only need like one drop to do your whole face or one pump. That's kind of like the big thing I'm seeing a lot. It is also paraben, sulfate, and phthalate free if those are things that are important to you. And it seems to be fragrance free as well. From swatching it and everything, I didn't notice any fragrance. One thing I do want to mention is this is a very heavily silicone based foundation. The first ingredient is dimethicone and then following in the first couple lines of ingredients there are a lot of silicone ingredients. So if you are sensitive to silicone or just don't like the feel of it, you're probably not going to like this foundation. For application, Becca recommends applying it with their one perfecting brush which is like their huge kind of like it looks like a giant version of the NARS Eda, basically, if you're familiar with that brush. It's like a big, flat kind of brush. I do not own that brush, so I'm just going to be using the Sigma Flat Kabuki F80 brush. This is one of my favorite foundation brushes. I'm just not feeling the beauty blender today, so this is what I'm going to use. And finally, as for reviews, the reviews were very mixed. A lot of people with dry and even dry to combination skin said they really didn't like this foundation. There were actually a lot of negative reviews, which kind of scares me, but a lot of people said it like clings to dry patches and like slides around and gets like patchy throughout the day, but we're just going to have to jump in and see. All right, so hair is back off of my face. In regards to the primer situation, thank you guys so much for your feedback on my last first impressions. I asked you guys whether or not you wanna see me use a primer for these foundation tests. And I'm taking your guys' advice. I'm only going to be priming half of my face from now on. So on the left half of my face, I have already applied the Bare Minerals Primetime Oil Control Foundation Primer. Sorry if I'm getting out of breath and talking really fast. That's just something I do. So yeah, left half is primed, right half has nothing on it, just for future reference for the review. I'm going to start off with just one pump because that's kind of what they claim will cover your entire face, which I am skeptical about, but that's what we're gonna start off with and see how far that goes. Alright, I'm just going to start blending that into my skin. 
I always get a lot of crap from people when I buff foundation into my skin, but don't worry, I'm going to go press it into the, my kind of more problem areas afterwards. Coverage is looking great so far. It kind of smells weird, like it doesn't smell scented, but it definitely has a smell. It's kind of interesting. Nothing too like offensive though. Okay, so that is one full pump. The coverage looks pretty good, but that definitely was not enough to do my entire face for sure. I kind of stretched that one pump as far as I could and tried to bring it up onto my forehead as well, but it didn't really give me much coverage there. And I still have quite a bit of redness going through, so I am just going to do another pump. I have to say, I do like this brush for applying it though. It's not looking streaky or anything like that. I'm just going to press a little bit of product into the areas where I need a little bit more concentrated coverage. Alright, so that is kind of what we are working with, with about two pumps of this foundation. The coverage is incredible. I think it looks amazing, like it's not a product where I have to go in and spot conceal at all. It did a really, really great job covering all my redness and scarring and hyperpigmentation, so I'm very impressed on that front. As for finish, it's not like totally dry yet, it's still a little bit sticky, and I'm not sure, like it has kind of like a natural, slightly, slightly luminous finish right now, but I'm not sure if that's just because it's not dry yet, like I said, it is kind of sticky to the touch. I think the shade is definitely going to work for me, especially when I have the rest of my makeup done. One thing I will say is that it does feel relatively heavy on my skin, like it's a definite full coverage kind of feel, if you know what I mean, which isn't something that bothers me personally, I don't mind being able to feel my makeup. As for the prime side versus the non-prime side, I don't really see a huge difference. They look pretty much the same to me, so I don't know. We'll see how that makes a difference in wear time. I'm just going to zoom in really quickly so you guys can see a little bit of a close-up. So this is what it is looking like close-up. I still have like a little bit of redness showing through here and stuff, but that'll be covered by my concealer, so I'm not too concerned about that. But like really, really great coverage. I am very impressed. Like, like I said, I'm not going to have to spot conceal or anything. It really held up well. And I also want to mention, it doesn't feel super silicone-y. Like, if you saw my review on the Maybelline Dream Velvet, that was like ultra silicone-y to the touch. This one isn't so much from what I can tell so far. So even though you get the smoothing benefits of the silicone, I don't really feel it when I like touch the foundation and like feel it in my fingers. So yeah, I'm gonna go conceal and finish off my kind of base makeup and everything and I will be right back. All right, so this is what my makeup is looking like with my full kind of base for products complete. If you are wondering what else I used on my face, I used the Max Select Moisture Cover Concealer to conceal just my under eyes and down the center of my face. Like I said, I did not feel the need to do any additional spot concealing with this foundation, which is amazing. Amazing. For my concealed areas, I use my contour kit to set. And for the rest of my face, I use my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder because I didn't feel the need for extra coverage once again. So initial thoughts, coverage first of all is incredible. This is like what I dream of in a foundation. A foundation that I can just apply and it gives me that easy, effortless, even coverage. That was a lot of alliteration. But yeah, I think it looks great so far. In terms of covering uneven texture, it does to an extent, but of course if you have scarring and like a lot of texture on your skin, it's going to show through at least a little bit, but with that being said, it's not like accentuating texture at all, like where I have scarring and like larger pores, it's not accentuating it or drawing more attention to it at all. One thing I will say is that it is a heavy foundation. Like it is a foundation that you look at and you were like, that person has makeup on their face, which I don't care, I love wearing makeup so that doesn't bother me. I would just say there's nothing really like natural about this product. And when I say heavy, I mostly mean the look of it. It doesn't feel like super heavy and cakey on my skin. I can feel that I have makeup on, but it's not like suffocating my skin. I don't feel like my pores can't breathe or anything like that. It's just... I like it basically is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, I'm very excited. I have very high hopes for this foundation. Fingers crossed that it holds up well because I am loving it so far. But anyways, I'm going to go finish the rest of my makeup. I might do like a little close up once I finish applying my makeup. But I started applying this foundation at about 1.30 so that is what we are going to consider our starting time. And I will talk to you guys in my first check-in.
All right, so this is going to be my first update. It is 7.30 now, so I've had this foundation on for about six hours. Sorry for the really weird, harsh lighting. I'll do some close-ups in a moment so you guys can get a better view of what the foundation is looking like. I don't have a ton to update on. The main thing that I wanna be really honest about is that it is a little bit cakey. Like, as I've had it on my face, I feel like it's definitely got a little bit rougher looking, and my pores have definitely become more noticeable, especially in certain lights. It's like, holy pores. So in the future, there's probably a couple things I would do differently. I would use a more pore smoothing kind of primer because the primer I used on the one half of my face doesn't really have any kind of like smoothing elements to it. And I would also use a damp beauty blender, not necessarily to apply it with because I like the brush I chose. It was really easy and fast to apply. But even just for after applying it with the brush, I would take like a clean damp beauty blender and just kind of quickly go over my face and that would kind of take away the heaviness of it. And I would also probably add in the Smashbox primer water to set my makeup with because that I feel like would make it look a lot more natural. Other than that, I am getting a little bit shiny. One thing that I thought was interesting too on the unprimed half of my face, right in this kind of like crease around my nose, after I'd had the makeup on for probably like an hour, I noticed that it was kind of making my pores a little bit more noticeable in that area and it is kind of like melting right in this crease of my nose here. But I think aside from that, both of these sides of my face look pretty much the same so I don't feel like primer is making a huge difference. Anyways, I'm gonna zoom in quickly so you guys can see a little bit better. I have to kind of tilt my head back so I don't get weird shadows on my face but as you can see, probably tell pores are looking a little bit large in the T-zone and my skin does look a little bit rough. So I feel like the smoothing kind of aspect of it is kind of out the window. And I don't know if you can tell, but like I said, it's kind of melting in this area where I get the most oily. Yeah, I will be doing one more check and as usual, I will talk to you guys right before I go to bed and wash off my makeup and everything. So I will talk to you guys then. All right, so it is time for my final check-in. It is midnight. I am so ready for bed and so ready to go wash my face. But since it is midnight, I've had this foundation on for about 10 and a half hours. And I have to say, I am really happy with it. The coverage is still really, really flawless. It hasn't even worn off in like my jaw and chin and like the side of my face kind of area like you guys know foundations always do. And I am oily and shiny, but not like excessively. Like I've tried other foundations that claim to keep you like super matte and claim to be like super oil controlling and long wearing and they honestly look worse at the end of the day than this foundation does. So for a foundation that doesn't make any crazy claims for wear time, I think it looks really good. Also, the camera's kind of casting a shadow here, so if it looks like my face and neck are drastically different colors, that's why. The difference between the prime side and the unprimed side of my face were very minimal. Like I said earlier, I would definitely use a primer for this foundation, just for like the slight effects it had, but I would opt for something a little bit more smoothing, just because it does kind of draw attention to my pores and a little bit of texture on my skin. I definitely feel like this is a foundation for more normal to oily skin. I see why it has really negative reviews from people with dry skin because to be honest, I feel like if you had dry skin that this foundation would kind of age you. That is just my honest opinion. I feel like it just will not sit well on dry skin. The only con I really have for this product is the fact that it is a little bit cakey and I feel like if I make the kind of minor tweaks that I mentioned in my first check-in that I feel like it would perform a lot better for me and be definitely a favorite product for me. It's definitely a hit and a product that I can see myself continuing to use and work into my regular routine. I recommend it honestly if you have similar skin to me like if you have acne and hyperpigmentation you will just like die over the coverage of this. I think it's better coverage than any of the foundations I've ever tried. I think it's a keeper if you are okay with kind of like feeling the makeup on your face and not having that like completely natural weightless kind of feel. You will definitely like this foundation, I think. Yeah, that was my first impressions of the Becca Ultimate Coverage Complexion Cream. If you enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out when you do. And of course, if you aren't subscribed, be sure to subscribe to my channel down below. I really appreciate it. Leave me any other foundation requests you have in the comments below and I will talk to all of you guys in my next video. Bye guys. So today we're going to be talking about what this product is, what it does, if it's worth the money, if it's worth the hype, because this product has been extremely well talked about recently in the beauty world.